All right, I've made this video as one video and I decided that it's way too long. I have an audience retention of about two minutes. Anyways, that's just how it is, unfortunately for me. But, so I decided I'm gonna have to make this into two parts. Part one is going to talk about this actual one right here. And it's gonna show you how it's all made. Part two will actually talk about the original ammunition for this, which there isn't much information on, but I'm going to talk about it to the best of my knowledge. So get ready, this is part one. Alright, so today's video is on the different types of ammunition basically that were made for the uh, RV-85. This here is just my training round, I guess, or my replica of a training round. It's not perfect because although I could get the measurements right, this was done before I had a lot of the knowledge that I do now, and even then, it's very little knowledge compared to what I should have on the subject, solely because most people, or most of the information on this just doesn't exist on the internet and all of it's in Czech, so when you're looking for that, you end up having to translate and if you're not a fluent, I guess, reader of the language you can make assumptions based on certain words that Google Translate would actually translate for you so you still have to piece together what the author means in his document Anyways, this one here, like I said, is my prototype because I've got to test the amount of powder that was in it. The reason I say this is because there are a few people that do own original rounds, but most of them refuse to take them apart. I understand that some people are scared of what could happen if they take them apart, but that's also based on ignorance. And a lot of people probably paid quite a bit for the pe the actual piece, so they don't want to damage it. If anyone's willing to give me one or sell me one that's not tear gas filled, so one of the real trainers, I would be happy with that. Um, as long as there's no tear gas because it's prohibited in Canada to own that and honestly I don't want to have something that I paid a lot of money for taken away from me at the border. So and then get to explain to a judge why I wanted it. Anyways, so I'll continue. This one here, there's a few different things from the original on it. First being that I'm using a smoke shell so it doesn't have the indents that it should have. I did make a tool for making them but I'd rather just put the elastics on for now instead of taking the time to do that. Second thing is here is a piece of paper. It's pretty ugly because it has glue on it. Uh, the original doesn't have it cut out. The tube here isn't cut to the inside diameter of the shell. It's actually the same diameter as here. I didn't realize that when I was machining it. And I just assumed that it was the same size. To fix it, I just wrapped it with paper that was soaked in glue to bring it to the size. In an, mainly in an attempt to protect my barrel when firing it. Same thing's going to go for this. I'm going to put a little bit of Teflon tape around it. It's a little bit undersized, so I should be able to put a layer of Teflon tape and sort of protect my barrel a bit with that. Supposedly also when they were fired, the original ones, they were coated with um, basically baby powder or uh, I don't remember the term for it anymore, but yes, baby powder in order to uh, reduce friction on the barrel to protect it a bit. The launchers themselves were rated to fire or designed to fire up to 1500 of these rounds. So, just to give you this, an idea of the strength of these, right, uh, these launchers. Anyways, getting on with this. Inside, instead of having a plastic fin or stabilizer, I had to use wood. You'll see it, I do have some video of when it's all apart. So I'll add that to this. 
And I said, and here, I built the whole thing as the drawings show, except instead of putting cartridges for CS or practice or anything inside, all I've done is took a shot shell full of lead, empty shot shell obviously. I filled it with lead to make up the uh, the extra weight. So you'll actually hear it slide back and forth. I didn't want it to do that. I tried to glue in the back so that when it impacted it would move forward. But as long as I keep it to the back when I fire it on the stand, I'm not too worried about any issues from, uh, I guess you call inertia issues. As you see written on the paper, I've got test and three grams black powder. I'm starting with that because the actual uh, smoke rounds actually are three gram charges. I wanted to start low and work my way up. The flares, which are shorter cartridges, are two gram charges. So, And if you looked at the rocket flares, because they have a rocket in them, I think they're only one gram charge. But those are all designed for the pistols. This would be designed only for the RV, which is why, like I said, they had the serrations on the edge to keep them from being chambered in a pistol. It would stick out actually most of it if you put it in a pistol, which is part of the reason why they did that. Operating pressures are probably a lot higher too, so it'd be dangerous to fire out of a pistol. Anyways, so I'm gonna do that. My test is basically gonna be simple. I'll make a new video on that specifically probably on the series of tests, but I'm just going to line up my, my launcher with a 50 sights on it to a target 50 feet, uh, 50 meters down range and fire. From there I could see how much extra I should be adding to it. I'm thinking I'm supposed to be in about four and a half grams range if all looks like it's supposed to be, but like I said, I have three in here. I had to add a the normal piece of cardboard and the piece of foam that's in them. I added an extra piece of cardboard and an extra piece of foam just to show you what the extra space I had to fill was. This means that I could probably put four to five grams of black powder in, which is, if I'm not mistaken, around what a shot 12 gauge shot shell would have had with black powder in it, but don't quote me on that. Anyways, starting low for those reasons there. Also not going to put a smoke charge in that because it's the first time firing. I don't want to uh, risk anything happening in the actual barrel. So as I said, this is mine. Anyways, so I've been working on making my own, a dummy one just to test out and see how this actual rifle fires. So this is what this is right now. I machined this out of steel, as you can see. There's a firing pin in there. Even though it's probably not going to be used, I'm just going to use some extra weight. And I guess that's the penetrator tip. It's probably supposed to be hardened steel, but as I said, this is a dummy one to test. So it's not going to be uh, exactly the spec. I'm going to get this, the weight to the right amount, but I'm not going to get that. This is supposed to be a piece of plastic, unfortunately I didn't have, so I had to do a half-assed job of making a stabilizer out of wood. And this is a turned down piece of aluminum. So, this goes in here like this. This goes in here. And the whole thing is supposed to fit in the shell.